<laughs> hey, this is Fern and Jake Puley. What a fun couple. That's Jake with the Frisbee. <laughs> Look at this. I got Fern coming out of a roadside restroom with a strip of toilet tissue on her shoe. Don't you love it? Why'd you shake her fist at me? <laughs> What's she saying? You don't want to know. <laughs> Oh, hey, how come Fern's face is melding? Ah, oh, that's that piece of film I spliced together with scotch tape lights. Oh, gosh, those are priceless pictures. Oh, yeah. Mom, when am I going to be in a movie? Oh, well, we have some wonderful film of you at your baptism, sweetheart. And just as soon as Daddy takes the last few feet of that roll, he's going to have them developed, aren't you, Lamb? Very funny. Hey, you folks got time for another reel? Oh, I don't know. Roy? What do you think? Color's good. <laughs> <laughs> Len wants to know if you want to see another reel. Oh, golly, it, it feels kind of late. Uh, what time is it? Mm -hmm. 7.30. <laughs> that late, huh? <laughs> Listen, now we got a 12-hour pass. <laughs> well, this one's a hoot. There are honeymoon movies. <laughs> are we in this one? Uh, no, honey, I'm afraid not. Let's go. <laughs> We're not in this one either, are we? <laughs> Get the lights, Maggie, and we'll watch the Westons' honeymoon at Lake Larva. Oh, this is really romantic. <laughs> Boy, if you like fishing, Lake Larva's the place. You do much fishing, Roy? Uh, no, I bowl twice a week. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. uh, <laughs> oh, this is a scream. What the color's good. <laughs> yeah, Ranger took that one for us. What a great place for a honeymoon, huh? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> There's a sunset every night. Yeah. Man, that's when those fish are really biting. Those suckers jumped right in the boat. Uh, it's the first day of my hernia. Oh. <laughs> Can't you be serious? The hernia was serious. Oh. Where well, did you see that bass, Roy? They were biting on spit. I'm not kidding. Hey, you'd be interested to see the bait I used, you being a fisherman. Nah, I bowl. <laughs> oh. oh, speaking of bait. Oh, stop it. Yeah, I got that shot myself. Oh, wow. This was the only time it didn't rain. Look at this. Wow. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good way to get rid of them. <laughs> I didn't believe we were ever that silly. Oh, uh, well, you were in love. Anyone could see that. Uh, 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 <laughs> oh, look at that. Well, here it comes. Here it comes. You cannot believe the fight this baby put up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice gone, Len. That's what I like about bowling. It's dry. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, hey. I don't know what, what happened. Lights? Now what? Let me see it. I can't believe it. What? The projector bulbs burn out. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> I don't suppose we got a spare. I don't think so. Oh, Maggie, you look so beautiful and so in love. Oh. I feel like crying. Don't you, Roy? Yeah, I felt like crying when I heard we had to watch home movies. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, honey, I, I think we have to go. Yeah, I gotta be back at Wright Patterson by 0600, and I got a little little surprise for Loretta here. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it's not a wife and three children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that dinner was wonderful. Oh, Thank you for it, honey, and for the movies. Hey, listen, it was a real pleasure, and Roy, nice <laughs> meeting you. Nice huh? meeting you too. <laughs> yeah, come back anytime. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sure bye -bye. thing. Right. Bye. bye bye now. See you all tomorrow, Loretta. Okay, honey, we'll do. Yeah, hey, don't do anything. I wouldn't do. Oh, <laughs> Boy, those honeymoon movies. They sure brought back memories, didn't they? Wonderful memories. I was kind of hoping that Loretta and Roy wouldn't hang around. Oh, have anything special in mind? Playoffs on TV. They started at 7, but we could still catch the second half.
late, girls, but Roy missed the last bus. Uh-huh. I just had to drive him back to the base. You and the Flying Tiger must have had quite a night. Oh, off we went into the wild blue yard. <laughs> he had a little surprise for me. A bottle of champagne. Imported or domestic? Not sure. It's called Chateau Buckeye. <laughs> he bought it at the PX. Oh. So, does this look like something serious with you and Roy? Oh, I don't know. It's a little too early to tell. <laughs> I met him last week at a Parents Without Partners bowling tournament. And he looked at me, and I looked at him, and it was a case of mild curiosity at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you and Len do after we left? He watched the playoffs, and I sanded my cracked heels. <laughs> One thing I'm sure we can all agree on, Maggie. You married adventure. Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, you should have seen the home movies from Len and Maggie's honeymoon. Oh, now there was a couple who were really in love. Why are you talking about both of us like we're deceased? Could it be that the happy honeymooners are deceased? Oh, oh, that's a laugh, Maggie. <laughs> oh, well, I know a sure way to tell. Um, where did I put that magazine? Oh, okay. Now, this is supposed to test your sensual quotient. Oh, this is stupid. Oh, now, come on, try it. It's fun. This is a good one. Okay, now, it's your anniversary. Did your husband surprise you with something naughty, sinful, and outrageous? I guess some people would call it that. Uh-huh. <laughs> what was it? A smoke alarm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now here's one. When was the last time you sent shivers up and down your husband's spine? I think when the checkbook balanced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wrong! You're not doing well. Let me ask you about your romantic life. Oh. No, I mean, listen, I know that's a personal question. It's just that I personally believe that whatever goes on between two consenting adults is their own business, no matter how kinky they are. <laughs> well, all right, for promise, this won't get around. A couple of years ago, we stayed at this motel, and they had those beds that vibrate when you drop a quarter in the slot. <laughs> a vibrating bed? I think that's disgusting. Well, so did Len. He thought the quarter was to turn on the television set. <laughs> All right, now here's another one. All right. When was the last time your husband kissed you on your neck? Oh, I was standing under the mistletoe. And he tripped over the Christmas tree light. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, Maggie, but you have just flunked marriage. <laughs> wow. Even Elizabeth Taylor, Hilton, Wilding, Todd, Fisher, Burton, Burton, Warner scored 65%. Oh, come on. Whatever trouble Len and Maggie are having is only temporary. Uh, Loretta, we're not having any trouble. We just... Stop dating. <laughs> Look, Len loves me. Well, of course he does. He loves me very much. He just doesn't like to show affection in public. Or in front of the kids. <laughs> or when I'm around. <laughs> oh, now, come on. Maggie's right. That's a dumb quiz. There's nothing wrong with her marriage. She and Len are as much in love today as they were on their honeymoon. Nothing's changed. <laughs> Well, no, Loretta. Some things have changed. Well, of course things have changed. Nothing is permanent but change. You know, the aware wife runs a tight ship, Maggie. She's always at the ready to plug up those little holes in her marriage, lest she find herself adrift on the sea of matrimony in a leaky love boat. <laughs> You know, there's some heavy stuff coming down here today. <laughs> you know, I come in here to have my hair fixed, not my life. And I, I really don't need people telling me what I know and what I don't know. I mean, I know what I don't know. And I know that I'm happy. I just don't know if he's happy. And actually, I don't know if I'm all that happy. Oh, Maggie, you and Len have just lost each other in the business of living. Now, what you have to do is rediscover those feelings. 
Well, how? Well, you two ought to try a couples encounter group. Oh, Loretta. We're not about to go to Big Sur and skinny dip in a hot tub. Oh, it's not like that at all. Frida Endicott and her husband were ready to chuck it all after 15 years. Mm -hmm. Then they went to this couple's encounter weekend, and now they behave just like newlyweds. Mm -hmm. They're always hugging and kissing and giggling and whispering. <laughs> Makes you want to throw up. <laughs> There's a wonderful encounter group in Chillicothe. I've gone to it five years in a row. You, Buffy? <laughs> Why, I thought you and David had the perfect marriage. <laughs> we do. <laughs> David doesn't go. He doesn't believe in them. I just go to gloat, hearing those desperate couples. Oh, just makes me feel good all over. <laughs> Frida's due in a few minutes. Why don't you talk to her about it? It can't hurt. Well, why not? <laughs> Well, now, good for you, Maggie. One encounter weekend can really make your marriage. <laughs> or break it. As we sang love's old sweet song on Moonlight Bay, on Moonlight Bay. Pretty good. <laughs> You know, I can't get over how easy it was to talk you into this weekend. I expected all kinds of arguments against a couple's encounter, but you went right along with it. How come? Because I'm a warm and wonderful person. Mm -hmm. And a swell dancer. <laughs> and what do they do on these things, anyway? Mm, who knows? Lectures and panel discussions. Free said, mostly you sit around and you learn how to communicate with one another and you have meaningful conversations. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't buy it either. But look at it this way. It's a weekend away from the boys. Uh -huh. Just us, no kids. Sounds like two weeks in Acapulco. Mm -hmm. No kidding, Maggie. Elsie is really starting to drive me up the wall. That music he plays is enough to make you sterile. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm going to do about Bruce. He walked out of the house yesterday, Len, and I'm not exaggerating. He looked just like a wino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you hear what we're doing. Talking about the kids. You're right. Subject changed. Do you miss Walter Cronkite as much as I do? Probably not. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I thought Frida said to stay on the interstate the whole way. There's a shortcut. Lots less traffic. All right, if you know where you're going. Mm. I want to get the map out and just take a look and see if it's Route 117 that we take. Glenn, you know I can't read when the car's in motion. I get nauseous. Maggie, I'm not asking you to read. I just want to know a route number. Well, why don't you just stop and ask directions? I don't stop and ask directions because I'm not lost, okay? You know, I knew you would say that. You won't stop even when we are lost. What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid. It's just that it's unmanly. Oh! Well, can you see George S. Patton pulling over his tank and asking some peasant, which way's Belgium? <laughs> Slippery when wet. What is it? <laughs> oh, you stayed 71 to Bookwalter, West Lancaster City Limits. How is it that you can read every highway sign without getting sick, but you cannot read a simple road map? That's because there's no such thing as a simple road map. Oh, they look simple enough till you open them up. How many people do you know can fold them back up just the way they were before? Three. They were all on That's Incredible last week. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you sure have a lot of hair in your ears. <laughs> Why don't you let me trim them for you? You used to let me trim them when we were first married. You've never let me get at your nose, though. You used to have this little one that was always... Maggie, singing. why don't you just count out-of-state license plates or sing 99 bottles of beer on the wall? I'll read the road map. This thing is jammed again. This car is falling apart on my side. The window won't roll down, and you got the door wired shut. <laughs> it's leaking all over my feet. I told you I'm going to trade it in soon. Why is it you will never fix anything until we're ready to sell it? Don't I count? You're missing the point. I fix it in order to sell it. In other words, if something's broken, nobody wants it. Or to put it in simple language, make it look good to get the top price. Are you aware that you do that? Do what? Speak in triplicate. You know, everything you say is one original and two carbons. 
think it must come from talking to children all these years. Okay, I'll say this just once. Where are we? I thought you knew where we were. I did know where we were, but you've got me talking so much that maybe I missed a turn off. Oh, I, I should have known this would end up being my fault. I'm going to stop the car right now. I think I'm going to get sick. It's all in your head. Don't think about it. Yeah, that's what you said right before I delivered LJ. Len, I'm getting sick. It's in your head, I tell you. It's going to be in your lap if you don't stop soon. <laughs> you have to stop for gas anyway. The gauge is on empty. Oh, that's nonsense. I got at least two gallons left when it says empty. <laughs> Turn that off before you run the battery down. <laughs> That's like saving your last clean pair of underwear for the trip home on the Titanic. <laughs> We're lost. <laughs> We're out of gas. <laughs> there hasn't been a car by here oh, in about an hour. But don't blame me. This weekend was your idea, not mine. Oh, well, you didn't have to go along with it. You never go along with any of my other ideas. I knew it was important to you. You were insecure. Oh, you were patronizing me, is that it? Yes. Oh. I never saw anything wrong with our marriage. Up till now. I'm hungry. Me too. Got anything in your purse? There's a sucker that's stuck to a comb. <laughs> what flavor? Raspberry. You know I hate raspberry. Good. I'll eat it myself. You would, too, wouldn't you? You bet. See, that's the difference between you and me, Len. I'm a survivor. I live with what I've got. Lord knows I've had enough practice over the last few years. What's that supposed to mean? Not important. If it's not important, why'd you say it? All right, as long as you brought it up. You're becoming very predictable. You know that? Every day the same thing. You come downstairs, come in the kitchen, pick up the newspaper, read out loud to me, and I'm supposed to sit there and listen. Hey, what's wrong with that? Nothing, if you're E.F. Hutton. And why don't you ever hold my hand anymore? Why don't you put the mayonnaise all the way to the end of the bread on my sandwiches? I'm being serious. Hey, I never kid about mayonnaise. And how many times have I asked you to fix the front doorbell? I fixed it. Uh, well, somehow, I don't call tacking up a sign that says, please knock, a major repair job. Hey, okay, you didn't marry a handyman. Oh, I knew that the day you hung the kitchen wallpaper with the grapes growing upside down. An oldie, but a goodie. Mm -hmm. How about the time you washed my shirts with a red blanket? You know, a teacher that goes to school with pink shirts is suspect for several reasons. Well, if the shirt fails. <laughs> At least I don't come to the table with toilet tissue flapping from my face. And I don't leave hairs in the basin. Yeah, well, I don't snore. Hey, I don't kill flies on the mirror. Yeah, well, when did you stop saying I love you in the daylight? When I found out it was more fun in the dark. Oh, th that's it. I'm... Of course, I can't even get out. Hey, anything. get out. I'll keep... <laughs> a meaningful conversation. Sure we have. What is a meaningful conversation? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, maybe it's the actions that speak louder than words, like when I used to tell you I loved you when I got you tickets to concerts that you wanted to see or mm -hmm. took you someplace special for dinner. Mm -hmm. Well, then I do the same thing when I change the oil in your car so you don't have to mess with it. I'm like, I always take the broken egg yolk because I know you like to break yours with your toast, mm -hmm. right? Oh, boy, is it ever going to be like it was before? <laughs> Not if we're lucky. And, you know, we've survived 17 years, and I still get goosebumps when you whisper in my ear, the washer is under warranty. <laughs> You're unbelievable. Hey, what'd I do now? You're doing it again. Doing what? You're joking. 
He did the same thing when I had my miscarriage. What are you talking about? I want... I wanted that baby so badly, Len. And when you came to the hospital, all you could do was tell jokes and try to cheer me up. But you never cried with me, not once. And I didn't like you for that for a long time. Why not you say something? You can't tell people when to cry. You know, it's funny. I was so proud of my self-control. <laughs> when I got home from the hospital that night, went to the nursery, picked up the paint cans, drop cloth, cleaned the brushes, put them away. It's like I was programmed. I wasn't going to crack. Not good old Lynn. Then I had to take that baby basket up to the attic. Still wet from the paint. Just before I turned the light out, I looked over. And I saw that little potty chair. That's when it hit me. I just sat down by the box of blankets. What part? All these years, you, you never told me. Ah, all these years, I didn't think I had to. We have to keep meeting like this. You think we need that marriage encounter? I think we just had one. Mm, let's go home. Good. I don't trust those boys. <laughs> Me either. I'm not going anywhere till I get some gas. Oh, boy. We passed the station about half a mile back. I'll walk back there and get some. You stay here. No, no, I'm going with you. OK. I hope they take credit cards. Well, if they don't, maybe we can get $10 worth if I leave my wedding ring as security. You can't do that. Why? Isn't it worth $10? Are you kidding? It's probably worth twice that. <laughs> You're doing it again. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're joking. No, I'm not. 